In times of war, you need to strike where it hurts. So as Vladimir Putin continues to bombard Ukraine, the West has decided his Achilles heel is his hip pocket. Crippling economic sanctions have been imposed not just on Russia, but critically also the inner circle of multi-billionaire oligarchs who supposedly protect Putin's power. Their super yachts and mansions around the world have been seized and their bank accounts frozen. And it's a tactic that appears to be working, with the president's pals now doing the unthinkable and turning on him. The Italian Riviera might seem an unusual place to start a story on Russia's war with Ukraine. But the reality is, a battle has also been raging here, on the beautiful blue waters of the Mediterranean. When it comes to the vessels in the port at San Remo, size matters. But this week, there have been two mega yachts turning heads for all the wrong reasons, with unexpected guests on board. The $400 million Lena and the $100 million Lady M, both owned by Russian billionaires, have been seized by Italian authorities as punishment for Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Oligarchs, Russian oligarchs, supported Putin because he was good for business. Not for any business, but for their business. And now suddenly he is bad for business. He is very bad for business. Alex Kononikin used to be one of the richest men in Russia. The founder of the Russian Exchange Bank, his worth was estimated at close to half a billion dollars. But on a business trip to Hungary in 1992, he was kidnapped by the KGB and his assets in Russia were seized. Alex has since been granted asylum in the United States, where he's once again become a self-made millionaire. Been in America a long time now. Do you watch Russia from afar and just sort of shake your head at what's become of that country? What I see where makes me uh, totally ashamed outraged, flabbergasted to a certain sense. And of course, uh, the war in Ukraine is the one which upsets me the most because it's unprovoked slaughter of civilians. And overall, Russia has quickly become a symbol of pure concentrated evil. A staple of Vladimir Putin's stronghold on power for decades has been his cosy relationship with the billionaires of Russia. Many of them are so rich because of favours from the president and in return, they supply support at home and abroad for the regime. But the president's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine is now causing his backers big problems as they become the targets of Western sanctions. It's a bit strange to get your head around Russia sends tanks into Ukraine and the West responds by targeting yachts on the Mediterranean. They're not just targeting yachts, they're freezing these accounts with hundreds of millions of dollars in them. And that is part of Putin's war chest to prosecute this war. So it is an actual direct hit on the source of some of the funds that make this invasion of Ukraine possible. Brooke Harrington has spent years researching oligarchs and where they stash their money as part of her work as a professor at Dartmouth College in the United States. We've seen in the past two weeks that Russian oligarchs are extremely fond of their mega yachts, their private planes, certain kinds of luxury goods like Birkin bags, real estate in specific places like Monaco is a very popular place to have a vacation home. Also, um, villas in the south of France or in Italy. Sometimes it's having a specific offshore structure, or being able to say, ooh, I have a, a Swiss wealth manager, or my watch is worth $100,000. Not only have yachts like the $800 million Dilbar been seized in Germany, so too have properties like this Tuscan villa. Roman Abramovich has now been added to the UK sanctions list. On Thursday, multi-billionaire Roman Abramovich became the highest profile Russian to have their assets frozen. 
hit by sanctions from the British government. In the process, he lost control of his pride and joy, the world famous Chelsea Football Club, which he's owned for the last 19 years. Vladimir Putin made them, but he's in the process of unmaking them all. Certainly he's made them pariahs, which really undercuts the main form of payment they get. Now, even if they manage to retain any of their fortunes, they're gonna be persona non grata, stigmatized everywhere in the world. They can't show any of it off. So what's the point? It's a real conundrum now for these oligarchs. Are they better off with Putin or without him? Absolutely. When only a few days after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, several major oligarchs started speaking out publicly against Putin, I knew something really, really big was up because the calculus in their heads must be um, they know that they're risking losing their fortunes. Putin giveth and Putin taketh away. And um, they must be thinking to themselves, yes, he could take it all away, but if I don't do something and try and stop this insane invasion, I might lose it anyways. Watching the horrors of war from afar, Alex Kononikin has decided to dangle a carrot for any of Vladimir Putin's allies considering abandoning ship. What he's come up with is bold and unquestionably dangerous. He's put a million dollar bounty on the head of Vladimir Putin, sharing this poster on social media, stating, wanted, dead or alive, Vladimir Putin for mass murder. You've really put your money where your mouth is. Uh, unfortunately, not yet. I'll uh, pay that money when that arrest happens. If that person uh, who arrested Putin uh, decides to accept my offer, it would be my pleasure to thought that somehow, even in a minuscule uh, fashion, contributed to it would make me uh, happy. Do you think the world would be a better place if Putin was dead? Oh, absolutely. I'd be one of millions of people who would celebrate his death. I think between him and Hitler, it would be a close competition regarding how many uh, people uh, would cheer uh, a news of his death. Alex now says part of his intentions have been lost in translation, clarifying that he doesn't want someone to murder Putin instead hoping a member of his inner circle arrests the president. Putin has a, a well-known track record of killing his political opponents. There must be part of you that worries that you will now be a target. I am aware of the risks, but I didn't want to be frightened into silence. He now has so many enemies. I don't think I'm even in the first volume uh, of his list of targets. He has much larger problems on his plate right now. Whether it be the brave protesters on the streets of Moscow or the Russian billionaires now pledging their support to Ukraine, the loyalty Vladimir Putin once commanded appears to be cracking. Having been in the Soviet Union when the Iron Curtain collapsed, Alex knows when regime change comes, it can come very quickly. It just needs some brave voices to get the ball rolling. Now oligarchs are probably the most dangerous enemies Putin has. And I believe he's acutely aware of it. A lot of people are jumping ship from Putin. Many people are. Many rats are fleeing that sinking ship, yes. And if one of those rats wants a payday, you're their man. Even if it's a rat. I know that agents of change are not necessarily angels, but they are needed in the history to cause that change. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.